Hello there everyone, it's Haz here and today we'll talk about salmon run bosses if you missed the tutorial or just need additional help on how to deal with them. So in this video I'll go through each boss in a minute or so and share how to handle them with some tricks and tips. Let's go! Steelheads Steelheads are pretty straightforward but can get annoying if you leave them around for too long. Best weapons against them are mid to long range guns since their bombs can be quite high. You just have to paint the bomb before they throw it away. Not much to discuss about them specifically, except that it's worth luring them next to each other or into crowds, as when they explode, they take everyone out around them. Flyfishes. Oh, now this one on the other hand is everyone's favorite. Important information is that they target two inklings with their launchers, so two of you should always be safe to handle them, and they are top priority to splat as even one can cause a wrap. And if there's already two, that will target all of you, and that's very dangerous. The standard way of handling them is to throw a splat bomb into their launchers one by one that will take them out. The trick I like to use is to aim at the lid like they teach basketball in school so your splat bomb will bounce straight into the launcher. One mistake I see a lot of people do is try to do both launchers in a row without moving. Be careful because you will likely get splatted. It's better to move a bit or ask for someone else to help you. The easiest way to handle fly fishes though in case of an emergency is to use your special. Most of them can destroy the launcher if you aim at them, such as Inkjet, Prep Tank, or you can even target Triple Ink Strike on them. There are also special weapons if you get lucky, such as the Exlusher that can aim its shots into the launchers to destroy them as far as I know, though I never tried this myself, so maybe someone in the comment section can confirm it. Scrappers Scrappers are salmon that's chasing you in an armored car, and their specialty is just being frustrating to deal with, but with good movement they can be beneficial. If you keep shooting them, they will always turn towards you until you stun them, or you can finally flank and splat them for eggs. The trick you can use is if you shoot them once, you will, as they say, tag them, and they will follow you instead so you can help teammates. If you manage to lure them near the basket, they're pretty much most of the time free eggs for the team, so use them well. The Steel Eel Now, Steel Eels can be a bit of a mess depending on how efficiently they are taken care of. A bad Steel Eel can ruin a whole run if they get to a bad crossroads as the whole team's mobility will be crippled. On the other hand, they can be lured efficiently near the basket and I generally recommend letting them get closer before you deal with them. You will notice this is a general advice to Salmon Run as anything you split near the basket is going to be easier to collect. The way I like to deal with them is to stand on top of a relatively high platform and let the steel eel come towards you and you can either jump down or just shoot their tail to split them safely and gather those eggs near the basket. Stingers Stingers are salmon at towers emerging from the sea that will target a specific player with their laser that you have to dodge. They are pretty straightforward, there's not a lot of trick to them except that they are also priority target you should focus on as they can easily overwhelm you. The danger in fact is that you have to go to the shore to deal with them and because of that generally long range automatic guns are good against them or blasters that can destroy multiple parts of their towers with a single shot. In worst cases they are one of the bosses worth using your special against like flyfishes. Maws. I hear from friends that maws are the bane of new salmon run players but they're actually a blessing once you get experienced so let's see why. Maws are sharks that swim underneath you and one shot you if you fail to move out of the circle. For this, it's recommended to keep a lot of ink around you if you notice being chased by a maw. The mistake most people do is that they start panicking, running around and try to split the maw with their guns. This is not only incorrect, but a very dangerous way of dealing with them, as you can get splatted easily or get overwhelmed. The efficient method is to throw your splat bomb into the circle and move away, as they will eat them and blow up immediately, also splatting everything around them. The reason they are blessing on higher rank is that maws are the easiest boss to lure near the basket and splat for 3 free eggs. So always try to lure them to the basket before throwing your splat bomb for best results and to help your team. Drizzlers. Now drizzlers are funny case because I think large majority of players just ignore them as not a danger, but they can be quite frustrating if you leave them around. They are salmonids that hide under an umbrella and shoot torpedoes into the sky that cause ink storm pouring all over the place. The way I see most people handle them is to shoot them after they shot their torpedoes, but most guns cannot destroy them in a single burst before they hide again, so usually it's better to shoot at them with friends. But it is not the most efficient way to deal with them, as if you didn't know you can actually shoot the torpedoes in the sky for quite a few seconds that will bounce them in the opposite direction and blow up. This means not only you can bounce the torpedoes right back at them for an instant splat, but you can also use it against other salmonids for extra defense. 
fish sticks. Now, fish sticks are the new salmonid boss type where flying salmonids carry a large totem and start spitting ink all over the place around them. They're usually not dangerous until they place the totem at a terrible location or right on top of you while you're being chased, as inking the ground under them is almost impossible and they heavily limit your movement. They can be dealt with in multiple ways from inking the totem to climb on top of them, shooting from underneath, or even from a higher platform with a good gun. Once they're dealt with, the totem can in fact be used as a relatively safe place to shoot from and help your team, but be careful as both fly fishes can shoot you there and the moths can climb the totem for an easy splat on you since it's really hard to see that. Flipper Flopper Now, Flipper Floppers are one of the easier bosses to deal with, but I still see players not knowing how. These salmonids will jump around the map in a circle and splat anything under them. The trick to defeat them is to paint the circle with your ink, so they will be unable to submerge and so you can easily splat them. They're also free eggs most of the time, and they are worth luring towards the basket just like others. But be careful, as if you are chased by anything else, you don't want to be caught by a flipper flopper, as they slow you down inside the circle. In panic cases or with weapons that are not good at painting, using your splat bomb will greatly help painting the ground. Or if you're lucky, you can use an emerging moss, as the splat bomb explosion from Moz will instantly paint a flipper flopper circle. Big Shots Big Shots are greatly misunderstood creatures in my opinion. They are considered highly dangerous, which is partially true, but I think it also is because most people don't know how they work. Now, Big Shots by themselves are doing nothing. What they actually do is shoot a gun on the shores towards the middle of the map to the basket, and this makes them one of the priority targets along with flyfishes and stingers as they are very dangerous and high damage. But after splatting them you can use their guns to shoot eggs to the basket with ease, but remember you still have to pick them up. Now the part that I think most people miss is that big shots don't actually shoot an explosion or anything, so don't panic. It works exactly the same way as your wave breaker that the shots they aim at the basket only cause waves on the ground that you can jump over. Easy as that. If you jump over them, you're safe and you can go in your way, so don't panic and just watch the ground. It's very easy to jump over. And finally, slap and lids. Slap and lids are, well, flying salmonid lids that protect anything under them while also spawning additional enemies. They're generally harmless, but I recommend dealing with them fast as they increase the amount of enemies on the stage and you can get overwhelmed fast. Not to mention they can block certain areas that could be useful later. The general method of dealing with them is running under the lid to force them on the ground and shoot them, but you have to be quick otherwise you get splatted. I personally love to use the new ink roll here as it's a quick and easy method to get them on the ground. Slap and lids can also be useful to splat anything else under them, so if there's a lot of enemies there, feel free to use it against them. The last benefit of this boss is that when they're on the ground, you can actually climb on top of them for a safe area and even moss can't get up there. After a couple of seconds, they will try to slap you down with a pen, but with a bit of practice, you can actually dodge that pen attack with a proper jump and you can stay up as far as you'd like. But that is it for this video. I hope it helps everyone get better and deal with bosses and salmon run. I tried to summarize them quick and easy, so there are some tricks and tips that you might not have known. But if you have additional tips against these bosses, help each other out in the comment section and also check out the rest of my channel for more Splatoon 3 content. Also check out my new series called Salmon Report where I talk about a new Salmon Run rotation every few days when they start to help each other out. Thank you so much for the support and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye bye.